Well, we're now in uh, lock two of the Hanwell flight. I think there's six locks or seven locks in this flight. And a uh, bit of a baptism of fire again after having all the locks done for us on the Thames, but hey-ho. Now, had we been uh, going into London, we've got the entrance over there to the Paddington Arm, which we will do at some point, but not today. I got my parasol up today because the sun's blazing down. Very yeah, cool. and as you see, we just passed the uh, entrance to the Paddington Arm, which we was going to do originally, but we've changed our plans. Yeah. And I've said before, we have a plan which never really goes to plan, yeah. and the plan always changes. So, yeah, we're now um, going to head all the way up the Grand Union and then get onto the Neen. Yeah. And uh, once we get onto the Neen, I'll tell you where we're going from there. We're in Denham Deep Lock. It's 11.1 uh, feet deep. Always seems a little bit deeper. I don't know what they measure from. Is that from the top of the water up to the uh, coping stones or is that from the bottom of the lock up to the water level? I'm not sure. Yeah, so Deb's up there. She's just opened the ground paddle on that side and the water is coming out under the boat, hitting the wall and then pushing the boat back, pinning us this side. And as the water comes up, she'll open that gate paddle and the water will flow down here again, keeping us pushed this side. So I'm here at the back, towards the back of the lock. No ropes or stunt doubles are being used. Yeah, and it takes a, a little while longer just to go up through the locks doing it this way, but ground paddle my side, gate paddle opposite side. Um, obviously once the water's risen up enough to open that gate fat paddle and that just keeps us pinned across without any heaving on ropes or banging. Yeah, so, and just want to get moored up now and out of the sun. It's ten past five and I think we set off at uh, ten o'clock this morning. So, haven't been in any hurry. Nice day's cruise. And we're up from, just up from Uxbridge now. It seems we've gained some helpers. Billy? Billy? Ruby? Ruby. Uh, yeah, and that's probably a false name because uh, he looks a little bit dodgy, that one. Yeah, I have seen. think I've seen him on Crime Watch. <laughs> nice moorings. Right next to Tesco's. So Deb's now going to go off and she can bring the trolley right back to the boat. Yeah, so that was a result. Didn't even know that the um, Tesco's was here. Hadn't checked on the map, but it's Thursday. It's going to be nice for the weekend, so we'll get our weekend barbecue shop and uh, find some nice moorings and more up for the weekend. Where are we, Deb? We are outside King's Landley. We've just, that there is the M25. So we're now on our way out of London. Yeah, it just of London. feels like we've uh, just escaped the clutches of London. Yeah. Yeah, so just carry on, gentle chug up the uh, GU. Yeah. Well, that's the first lock of the day nailed, red line lock, just on the outskirts of Hemel Hempstead which is strange because I'm now visiting places that um, I've worked at over the years and stayed away from home in hotels. Yeah, so we're now sort of coming through all these places in our new life. Nice 
nice little marina right in the center of Henel Hempstead. Aspley Marina. Apsley. Sorry, just been corrected. Apsley Marina. Had all the right letters, just not in the right order. Yeah, so as you can see behind me, there's the old dry, dry bed of the canal. Um, you can see all the old um, dried out puddle clay and they're gonna climb down through the nettles and that and see if I can get a better shot. Yeah, so now walking along the bed of the canal. Crazy. Yeah, and we're, we're now going up to an area where they're um, actively doing some restoration work. So hopefully we'll get some good footage up there. So there, here's a section that they're actively working on. It's interesting to see the um, method they're now using. Yeah, so as you can see, you've got your, your old bed. It's all now been excavated. They're putting down a... Uh, I'm assuming it's some sort of uh, butyl membrane, then with a the carpet carpeting on top, edging it with these concrete blocks, and then inlaying um, other concrete blocks, breeze blocks on this side. So, a hell of a lot of work involved. By volunteers? Yeah, so you can see behind me some sections they've already uh, done, and obviously this has been done in the last year or so and weeds have grown over it but again uh, all the block work and there's a, a a matting and then clay puddle clay gone back up on top of that i think we're still a little way off coming through here on the boat though yeah i shall try and find out um how long this uh, restoration has been going on and how long it's likely to go on i think it's all volunteers who are doing it Right, so we just come up to bridge, let's have a look behind me, 4A. bridge 4A, and it looks like beyond that there's water. And here's the area where it stops at. Oh, look at that, name plaques um, of obviously all the volunteers who've helped over the years. That's excellent. and Deb's just pointed out, there we go, restoration cost uh, £500 per metre. So can you envis envisage us coming down here in our lifetime? I, I don't think so. No, I the, don't think yeah, so. The, the bit the, it's a shame. Yeah, the bit we've walked, I think it's taken about 15 years just to restore that section. And then there's um, another section probably just as long yeah. if not longer to restore in the same way and, and uh, the what you have to understand is that all the volunteers that have passed gone you've got yeah, volunteers now yeah. but there's there's not as many volunteers no, you need a, an, an influx of uh, passionate people yeah yeah, the, um, yeah. To, to do it or somebody with a lottery win yeah and there we've got the workforce now going back to work Yeah, so that little bridge there, um, oh, we got bridge number three, that was re completely rebuilt in 2001. Yeah, after it was demolished in 1973. As they said, the canal had never be used again, but they argued against it, and then uh, they raised all the money to have it rebuilt. Fantastic. And hopefully round the corner, our boat will still be there waiting for us. There she is. This one and a half mile section that was restored in 2004. 
And there is where it ends. Nice big winding hole. And we're now gonna head back up onto the main part of the GU. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? Yes. Oh. Yeah, just uh, setting off, leaving the bottom of the Wendover arm and took my chimney down, which I always do, laid the chimney on the roof, but the low branches decided to... Knock it off. Yeah, pull my chimney off and put it in the... Uh, Into... In the Wendover. Yeah. So, tried to fish it out of the fishing net, couldn't feel it. I've got an old... Uh, um, carved walking cane which I managed to locate it yeah and uh, hook it back out all, all I've done is lost the cowl off the top so just replace the cowl and not the not the whole chimney Ray. yeah so yeah day saved yeah Yeah, now coming past a flour mill now when we came through here there's a little s bend and that was very very shallow so i think the water level looks about the same so hopefully we'll get round okay i think deb's just put the damp dampeners on things she said this is the area where you wouldn't want to meet another boat yes so we got another corner coming up so i'm expecting a boat to appear Oh, got round. Yeah, so if you come down here, this first corner, very shallow, and you lose all steering. So it's now coming to the end and back onto the main arm of the GU. Little bit of a tight turn coming out of there. And there's, there's the lock to take us down. Yeah, so anybody coming down here, I'd, I'd highly recommend go, going down the uh, Wendover Arm. Very nice, glad we've done it. <laughs>